before. You never had a plan B. There is no plan yeah. B. You know, you, <laughs> there's, music was going to be your career. There's this plan. Yeah. And that's it. This is going to hurt. It's time, it's time for, the for the Suffering Podcast. Podcast. Tell us that feeling. Um, I didn't really kind of understand it. Uh, again. It's too 20, young to understand it at that point. Yeah. It was. Um, Just a kid yourself. 23, 20, probably 23. If I'm 30, I'm 56. Yeah, it was 23. Hmm. Um, you know, I really kind of didn't understand what that was all about, you know. And coming from uh, being an only child and an adopted child as well, um, I wanted to have, I wanted to have kids and hmm. have a, a family of my own. So when we found out that Derek was uh, not developing the right way, you know, it was this road that was so confusing is because, like, you're you're young. You, you don't think about all of this stuff. Like, wait a minute. It's supposed to go this way. It's not supposed yeah. to go this way. Plus, again, 33 years ago, they didn't have the knowledge they had now. Well, they, they you're right. They didn't. But, um, you know, there was uh, – there I uh, there's <clears> – <throat> excuse me. I have uh, – I have lost. Um, it was a, it, it was a learning experience, and uh, I, one that also made me realize that where my path is, you know, uh, my path is that's I'm number going, one. I'm going to be taking care of him for the rest of his life and my life. Think and, about it. think. I want everybody to think about that. You've Every come to day. that realization as a young man. I had to, yeah. That I am going to be taking care of a child for the rest of my life. 100%. And, because and now, he can't take care of himself. Where, where were you in your career at that point? Oh, uh, I was, oh my God, I was working. Um, and at, you were still in the music business that early. Yeah. yeah. Well, I, I mean, I was uh, working at a guitar factory uh, and I was playing in a band, uh, you know, uh, trying to do whatever. You know what I'm saying? Like, again, working at a guitar factory. Yeah. Making money and going home and, you know, and staying out and rehearsing until 12 at night and coming back home and, you know, trying to do all that stuff. But, um, but it was, it was kind of rough. It was, um, and, uh, you know, you either, you either step up to the plate or you just give up. And I'm not one of those guys (laughs) that you have to literally kill me and beat me down to the ground and bury me before I... If I have one ounce, I get up. Was that always that way, or was that that way after Derek? Well, I mean, we we talked about it before. You never had a plan B. There is no plan B. (laughs) Music was going to be your career. There's this plan, and that's it. You know, I mean... Well, plan B is a sure recipe for failure. That's the truth. Yeah, it just, it makes you less hungry and more comfortable. Mm. Because, it you know, you sit there and you say, oh, well, you know what? I don't really want to do that. I could kind of... You know, I got this to fall back on. Yeah, it's like, you know, no big deal. It's yeah. like, yeah, it is a big deal. But one of the things I was saying was um, with that whole learning experience and doing all that stuff was, is I kind of started really seeing how weird the world was. That it wasn't this, because, you know, I lived in a, you know, uh, not a sheltered life, but uh, my main life was, you know, music. You know, I didn't really know how the medical industry worked or, you know, any of this stuff. I had no idea, you know, and I come to find out that there's that when, when they say you're an expert, I have to, I have to kind of doubt you until I believe you until you show me something that makes me an expert. Meaning the, when Derek was being like, we were going through this whole thing. We brought him to doctors, you know, I have, I had a list of all of these things that these people were telling us what was wrong with him. Oh, he has a muscular dystrophy thing. He has this thing. He's not going to live six months. He's not going to do this. He's not going to do that. And I'm like, all of you are fucking wrong. <laughs> Every one of you. You know? God, don't were. you feel like calling him today and saying, no, hey, jerk I don't. off, listen. You know, but 33 but, years well, it, ago. It's part of that learning mm-hmm. experience. It's like, Okay, and then, you know, you get a list of these things. You have this child that, you know, is not walking, you know, or he's not, you know, turning over or whatever like this, and you're like, oh, okay. So then you have these experts, you know, and, you know, you take it with a grain of salt, you know, but once you go to one guy and says this one, and then the other guy says this one, and then the other guy says this one, it's like, what do you do? You know, you're telling me right now that this kid's not going to live for another six months. 33 years later. Yeah. You understand? That's got to be some tough news to get. You know, I... I 
once that child's born, I, I tell new parents this, that you never, you thought you knew what worry was. When you have a child, you really know what worry is. It changes your life. Yeah. And, and w when you when a doctor, or a quote unquote expert comes up to you and says, hey, the kid's not going to live another six months. That's got to be devastating news. Well, I started thinking about that, knowing that, you know, this one says this one. How can I trust you people? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? If if it does happen, then it does happen. You know what I'm saying? It's like, it's horrible here, but what am I going to do? I mean, you know, okay, I'll ask somebody else. And then this one will tell me, nah, that guy was absolutely fucking crazy. We had this thing um, very early on uh, when Derek was, I don't know, six, five, six. He used to get these seizures, right? Where he would just like, you know, he would just, and then he would just kind of go like this and be at it. Brought him to a doctor, obviously. So the neurologist, you know, says, oh, these are these are grand mal seizures, this and that, blah, blah, blah. Okay, we're going to put him on this uh, medication called Depakote. Okay, I mean, this is, you know, little six-year-old kid, right? Taking these big, gigantic pills. Bust them up, right? Whatever. It's, so I started giving him. Seizures start oh, cutting down. He's not getting a lot. It wasn't like he was having one every day or, what you know, just sitting around Kind of go, and then all of a sudden, start coming back. Bring it back to the doctor. Okay, we're gonna up the dosage. Okay, so now I got to give this kid two pills a day. Yeah. Okay, give him two pills a day. What happens three weeks later? Come back. Yeah, we're he's gonna up having the, he's up having the more again. he's having more seizures. So we're like. Okay, bring him back to the doctors. All right, we're going to up his doses. So now I got to give this kid three pills a day? All right. After that third visit, I went home, and I took that entire bottle, and I dumped it down the toilet. And I said, listen, <laughs> do you? I'm no medical expert, and I'm no surgeon or doctor, but I can tell when something is not working. Is if you're giving this here, go away. They come back. Two more come back three more this ain't working so you know what we're just going to shy off of these things let it ride and see and we're going to go find somebody else or see what what can happen so you, you know? dumped them all down the, down the toilet and that is a bunch of fish in the river having having that aren't having seizures <laughs> but one of the things too was um you know he uh from that moment on never had one seizure again never not really? one not one you know because i i have heard that children grow out of seizures they do they grow yeah. out of them he, uh, Derek, when we started getting these other little seizures um, a couple years ago, and uh, I, I, you know, so he's on uh, this other medication, but they're just, they're, they're, they're weird ones, you know, it, and it, they don't happen often. It's like once every three months, like he would get one, but they were kind of concerning because they, it was, it was different than what we, uh, when I, I saw when he was a little kid, he would just have these like little, little ticks and then just snap out of it, you yeah. know, so. That's where I was saying with, um, you know, the the trusting of people. And it's not that I don't trust all doctors. You know what I'm saying? It's like... You just vet the information a little better. I, I just have to, you know, it's just amazing to me. You know, I mean, like, you could go into any place and, you know, a body shop. Some guy says, yeah, I haven't opened this body shop. Yeah, I could do that for, you know, $1,300. And another guy goes, ah, that guy sucks. I could do it for 800 You know what I'm saying? It's like, right. shouldn't do it this way, should do it this way. And I'm like, I don't know. It but, was just, that's part of the, um, the, the learning process with, you know, the special needs. And well, it, I was well, going to say, especially back then, you were still so young. Yeah. Right? You said he was six years old, so you were, what, 29? You, and you 29. didn't really know much about the medical field, so yeah, you're I mean, relying on these people to... Yeah. I mean, it's, well, that's what you do. You rely yeah. on these people. These, you know, experts. And another one, which was just, uh, it just kept, it just kept going and going and going. And Derek has perfect eyesight. He kind of squints at little things, but. We'll tell him to stop doing that in the bedroom. He's got perfect <laughs> eyesight. He's got perfect eyesight. Well, <laughs> let's, let's just say this. So I get this call from his school one day. And they said, uh, we're having an optometrist come in. Uh, to check the student's eyes and, and, and this and that. Would you be interested? And I'm like, yeah, whatever. I don't care. I get a note sent home that said that according to this doctor, my son is legally blind. <laughs> you could have got great parking, though. 
<laughs> Legally blind. Yeah. I'm like, really? As I'm reading this letter, I'm watching him play with Legos, picking them up off the floor. <laughs> right? So I'm like, okay. So then they get this other recommendation coming back to say, we should check his eyes. He, he needs to be. And then the school got involved. They were like saying, you should get him glasses and everything like that. And I'm like, I don't, I, you know, okay, this guy's an optometrist. Right? I'm his father. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not an eye doctor. I'm just, I'm watching him play. He's walking around. He's eating. Like, he's not bumping into walls. He's not, like, you know, doing this and doing all that. So, right. but, you know, that, you, that's it, too. When you go for an eye test, you know, you look at the little, you know, what's read the top line. You can't tell little Derek to read the top line. It, was, it wasn't even that. It was that, you know, if they put him on this thing and they're looking at his eyes and telling him that it's legally blind. So I'm like, okay, I'll entertain this. Okay, what do we do? Oh, we bring him down to the office or, you know, this, this and that. So I drag him down there and he doesn't like anything on his face. Uh, you know, when we were doing that whole COVID thing, it was a freaking nightmare. <laughs> <laughs> freaking unnecessary nightmare. Anyway, but so they put this thing on him and the guy's looking at this and he was like, yeah, oh yeah, his vision's really bad. And I'm like going, what? Yeah. He was like, oh, we're going to, we, we can get him a prescription for glasses. I said, the kid will never wear glasses yeah. on his head. Right. Never in a million years. You put them on, he'll yank them off. And what we'll be doing is breaking, we'll be buying glasses for the rest of it. Well, we can put a band around it. Okay. Yeah. You can just yank yeah. that off. So I'm like, he's not going to wear glasses. So you know what the guy says to me? I swear <laughs> to God, he goes, well, what we can do is I'll give you these drops. You could put the drops in his eyes to make his vision bad so he gets used to wearing the glasses. I said, but do you understand what I'm saying? So you, you, you lose <laughs> Goodbye, Doc. Good <laughs> seeing you. I said, how much was this visit? You lose <laughs> there faith. You go. When, when you start getting bad advice from doctors, you lose faith. And I saw this. I was recently in the, the, hosp, the, the doctor's office for something, and he's telling me to go on this special diet. And he was saying things, and he, he actually got into a political discussion with me, which was unprovoked by me. I didn't say a word. He starts talking about politi political debate, and it just it, it agitated me. Right. So now when I get agitated, I don't know about you, no matter what they say, they could give me the best advice in the world. I'm not listening to you start it. zoning out. This guy starts telling me to put on go on to a, a plant based diet. And I'm like, do you go on a plant? Are you on a plant based diet? I'm like, yeah, well, you look like a fucking hobbit. <laughs> OK, so I'm not listening to a goddamn word you say, right. because everything else you've told me was wrong. And did was it was it something along those lines? It's it, it, it's a process. I mean, like this is what I was telling you before about learning about all of this stuff. It's like you know, if I didn't really, if I didn't have two screws in my head screwed correctly, I number one, this kid would be still be on Depakote for the rest of his life. <laughs> number two, I'd be pouring eye drops into his eyes, making his vision bad, thinking that's a <laughs> like, come on. You See, know? Why didn't you just get them contacts then? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Now, so. at some point, you had to get your bearings on the situation yep. or to somewhat, somewhat stabilization. How long did that take, that process? Uh, I, I don't. Between work and home. I mean, you, you still got a career going on yeah. that you're striving I, for. I don't really remember. It's like kind of. Um... <clears throat> It's all like one just kind of meshed. Yeah, it just kind of it just kind of flowed together. There wasn't like a definitive point or a definitive this. You should you know? have had a second one. The second ones are easier. Yeah, yeah. Second ones are so much easier. And yeah. I'll tell you, I'll tell you why. My little one, the poor kid, Jimmy, he, uh, you know, with, with my first one, we're new parents and we're neurotic like everybody else. Where's the second one? I don't know. He's in the corner eating marbles. <laughs> I don't know. He's fine. He'll be he's all right. right. He's got. He's got that gain of gas and a lighter. Hey, yeah, he'll be fine. He'll, he'll be, be fine. Right. He'll figure it out. Yeah, he'll figure it out. Yeah. If not, he'll learn real quick. Yeah. <laughs> but you're you're pretty much an expert doing this for 33 years. Um, I'm an expert with him, 100. percent right. Not being, you know, um, you know, there's like I said to you before, there's the there's a a a, a great reward, uh, and then there's a great. I don't. What's the opposite of reward? Is uh, you know, there's a great like. Downside to it. Downside yeah, to it. Down. For, yeah. You know, like I said, for example, is um, you know, you have you have children that will bear other children. Derek won't. Derek is. It's the last. That's it. <laughs> the last of the tailors. That's the last. You know, yeah. and it, it, it you know weighs on me sometimes. But you know, I I actually like like when we're walking around the store, right. 
and uh, like you know, he's standing next to me, and we're just walking around. It's like the greatest thing on the planet. It's like this is my this is my best friend right here. <laughs> yeah. This is my son. This is my best friend. This kid, you know, it's like hey. Hey, fuck face, get over here. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> hey, shit for brains. Come on. You know, and, or he's like picking up something and he's looking at it and he's showing it to somebody else. And I'm like, you know, I'm trying to wrangle him in because he can, you know, I mean, he never leaves my side. It's never, it's never like, you know, like, oh, you, you want to go into the, the book aisle and look at the books and everything like that? I'm going to be over here. You're no, not a chance. <laughs> he's but, attached to me. You know, I, I used to say, and this was before I met you, that I wish my son was six years old for the rest of his life. I used to say that because at six years old, you're still their hero. You're their archetype. Mm -hmm. And then you came in and we, we discussed it and I'm like, well, some ways, yes. And that's the bittersweet that you were talking about. Some ways, yes. Some ways, no, Yeah. some ways, no. But you know what I mean? And, and like I said, I've been around Derek and little Derek thousands of times, the way little Derek looked at his father, you know, I mean, even like when you're on stage, and he's just he's, sitting there, and he's, he's just like, buddy. Dad, Dad. Oh, you know, sitting on the couch, you know, me and Lenore sitting on the couch, and it's he's in his room. It's like, da, What? Bus. <laughs> da, What? <laughs> Hi. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it, it's, it is amazing. But, I'm going to go do that to my kids. <laughs> but, the you know, a lot of times it's like, <laughs> I have to... Uh, lately, I mean, <laughs> past couple of years, I turn on the TV and I start watching things the way the world is going, and I am so glad yeah. I don't have to deal with any of that stuff. And never. I, I fear for my kids yeah, sometimes the way, the, the way the world's going. I do. I do. I don't have to worry about that at all. But the only is, thing I have to worry about, I'm sorry. Go there ahead. is one thing that, see, I'm looking forward to getting older for this reason, because mm -hmm. I can't wait for my son to wipe my ass, because <laughs> I won't wipe his ass enough. 